and welcome everybody, Monty here, back, and this time we're actually going to play and build some stuff out with A-Train 9. This is version 4.0, the Japanese railroad simulator, kind of city builder, yet stock management kind of transport tycoon. I don't know what it is, but we're going to play it and enjoy it and find ways to get it to work out. I had version 3, didn't play it too much. If you guys didn't see, I made a previous episode that included how to just create an empty map. We called it Learning Ground. So that's actually what we're going to use. We're going to go New Game. Uh, it's one of my custom games, of course. And we start out with uh, 800 million, and it's going to be January 1st, 1980. Uh, let's just go ahead and jump right in and see if we can get this empty map into some type of successful metropolis of cities and transportation hubs and just play around with everything we can play around with. So here we are, Master's Edition. I guess that's what version 4 is. Picked it up on a good Steam sale. Uh, full price, it is a little bit hefty. I'm not going to sugarcoat that at all. I'm not too sure. It's, they're asking some big prices when you got games out like uh, Skylines and such, but they've slowly been working away at this thing, hacking away. And I think I'm going to want to start over here. The basic idea is how can you make money? And you can make money by well, either transporting goods and passengers, just kind of like you can in games like Train Fever. Uh, this game you can also use and play around in the stock market, which is pretty intense, uh, yet pretty easy, because you're going to learn that you're going to have to sometimes fast pace the game just to get things trucking which I'm going to pause it right now. Not that it matters, I'm not making or losing money, so I'll just let it tick away. It's slowly moving. Like, look, it's actually January 1st, 1980, and the seconds, or the minutes, are just kind of trucking by pretty slow. So you got to think realistically. It takes months and sometimes, or weeks and months, to build some of these buildings. So you're going to want to go fast, and with that in mind, wouldn't you like to have time travel warping capabilities and play with the stock market? I mean, you can just imagine what you can do with that. Uh, this episode, I just want to get an initial line going, and then we'll dive deep into it, because, man, this game is deep. There's all kinds of things you can do. Uh, right now, let's just go ahead and build a ground-level station. Uh, this is right off of the stations here. I like building my stations out, then connecting at rail, and then going from there. I want a large... 10 length platform and let's go ahead and do two uh, platforms off of this guy and we're going to I use the mouse middle mouse scroll you just click on it uh, let's see I think the arrow keys also work yes left and right arrow uh, what I'm gonna be doing is instead of making a factory this is a completely empty map I'm going to be getting the goods from this little Tron esque blank area over here. You can actually just get goods from out there. So that's going to be my tactic. So let's just drop this here so I encompass this whole corner. That'll be nice. And I'm going to go to rail. And this is where you get your track and road. And let's zoom in and take a look at this brand new fancy station. Great things I like about this game is there's real seasons, there's real weather. All these things actually impact your game and trains and all that fun stuff. It's pretty intense and spectacular. So we're going to go ahead and let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, yes, I'm trying to think of which line I want to do this off of. I think I'm going to do it off of this one. The goods here and then have the passengers go on the outside. Yes, thinking ahead. Uh, definitely do not play this game if you are used to, well, you can play the game. Don't play it like Train Fever, if that's the kind of game you're used to. It doesn't play the same way. So I definitely had to dive into some manuals and do all that hard work. <laughs> A lot of reading. Checking out other YouTubers. Colonel Failure has some good stuff on version 3. Uh, let's see. I want to go with trains. We're just going to click on this new guy here. Just hit buy. Everything's available. Even if I set this game to 1960, everything is available. I'm going to just go with freight. And remember I said the train station is 10, uh, 10 car length, so this is good. See your different pricing, the buying price, I can see the speeds. I don't need anything extra fast, this is right on the side of the map. Uh, this one can go up to 10 cars, so I'll do that and drop them, why not, 50. I don't need them that fast, no, we'll go full speed. And confirm purchase, boom, 
then he's up here. Now you click on the train, we're gonna place him right on this line here, and we'll hit play. Oh, I already hit play. Next, we gotta construct a warehouse under materials factories. This is under construction. I'm gonna go with just a straight up large, because this is gonna be importing all these. I'm gonna show you some tricks in a second. You don't have to build these above ground. It's actually better if you build them underground just for saving space. But for video purposes, you, I like having some of them on the surface because you can actually see them at all times. Uh, what I'm showing here is that in the top right, you can actually click on the height bar, set height, and go underground. And see, check that out. It's actually like a neat little underground warehouse. Uh, just be aware that if you go too deep, this was thanks to some comments on my Steam pictures. If, of course, you guys should follow me on my Steam. I upload screenshots of my videos and everything on there, as well as YouTube. Uh, but I got some comments that if you put these too far underground, that the goods actually won't work. So it's not just a radius, but it's also height restricted. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and close out of this. For now, I'm just gonna be keeping them on the ground surface for video purposes, but uh, I'll put some underground. So now check it out, the train came in full of goods, just from the edge of the map. So I'm not having to worry about the factory, which is if you look under construction, that's what these factories are here. Because at the beginning of the game, you might not be making money off of it, so I'm starting a whole new tactic of a clean map and taking advantage of the invisible goods that come from weird off Tron land over there. So now that we're getting some goods, let's go ahead and build some infrastructure. This is a full out city building. You can, it's gonna organically grow out, of course it is. However, you can really build everything exactly how you want it. Either you can play in sandbox mode and do that, or you just make a bunch of money here and you can do the same thing. You can custom build every single building and place it how you want. Or you just provide the materials and you worry about transporting everyone and the cities will organically grow. So what I'm gonna be doing is placing some roads down just so I know what this area is gonna look like. It's gonna be kind of more than kind of, it's definitely going to be grid-like. And I'll probably do maybe a bus path or something like that. Now this game, it's not about like, I don't have to connect the road to the station. It's all about radius. That's another difference that it's, it's a little bit tough to get used to, but it is possible. Um, yeah, so the radius, that's what's interesting. So I'll show you that here, like you could see on the station, when I build these out, you can see, okay, that, as long as I build this warehouse, let me go to a, a materials depot, or a depot. If I build it out of the green circle, I am no longer getting, I won't be able to get goods to it. But if I build it within the green circle, that train station is going to supply this depot with goods. That's just how it works. Uh, so you gotta be aware of that. I can actually show you the underground tip because of that. So let me go to set height. And if I go underground, see how the train stations lit up? That's great and all. But if I go 40 meters underground, no more. That's no good. So it's a 30, 30 meter barrier. Because see, I'm at 30 meters, no good. But if I get below that 20, I'm good. So same thing going up high. You got to keep that in mind because I'm, I was going to show you what I wanted to do. This hill over here, I want to build up like wind turbines and all my power. However, when I try to build them too high, I actually can't get the materials there. Uh, ooh, look at the moon. Ooh, okay. The little things. Uh, just wait, when the seasons hit and this builds out, it's gonna look really nice. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is if you look at my reports, and I go to energy, I've got no power, but there is a demand of 80 kilowatts. So things will still grow with a little bit of a slack of power, but we do wanna definitely get our initial power going. I am still gonna go with, mm, I have enough materials, I'm gonna go with a small power plant. You can see the number here. The wind power plant here takes three. That's how much power it's gonna provide, a thousand. Uh, this little swift wind turbine, 3,000, but six consumption. Uh, I wanna go with the solar power and just place this guy right here behind the station. Now you can see if I go to my reports, boom. Electrical power total, and I will eventually eventually, not right away, because I just purchased this, I will make money and profit off of my power grid. 
Uh, so, and look, the lights turned on on my streets. So version four, there are some funny little things here with the game that are uh, fun to play with. They've added not only, where am I, trains and buses, but you can do leisure vehicles. Now I'm gonna speed up time to make it daytime real quick and then slow it back down. I'm gonna try to do that a lot. Ooh, we got more goods coming in. Now let's go ahead and take out one of these just so I can show you what it is. You click on a skycraft or a leisure craft here. I'm gonna go drive it and I'm gonna place it on the water. Aha, we are now vehicle exterior, this boat. And I can actually drive it around and honk the horn. I'm gonna hit, hold on, I gotta get some audio for you guys. Cancel driving mode, options. Uh, you can just press the M key to turn it on and off, but I have the music up. So let me turn the music all the way down to the, almost the lowest level. There we go, now we got train noises. We're gonna be good now. All right, so now let me get back to my leisure vehicle. So they don't stay in the game, unfortunately. You can't just plop down a bunch of cars and boats and have them there. Uh, but when you go drive it, place it, now I can cruise around in it. And now check it out. Honk honk. So you can actually cruise around your city. You can actually drive your trains as well. So there's some neat little features that they added. So if you see from the driver's seat, cruise around. Pretty fun. Now you can imagine once you get your cities really well built up that this is going to be fun and good times. But I think I just want to summarize this real quick. We got goods, right? So we got our train line coming in. We didn't have to set any timetables or anything. He's just automatically getting goods from out of town, bringing them into our materials factory, depot, sorry. This depot is allowing us to either place buildings and it's going to allow for automatic growth. We're just gonna have to crank up the time to let that happen. So now that the time's cranked up, we're gonna close out of our trains. We will eventually see some growth here because they're gonna automatically take these materials and build something out and about in these roads, which you can now see. So we're gonna slow time up. We've got some farms going, some agriculture, and this is going to bring some housing in. So if I go to my reports, lovely graphs and all these fun things, you can actually see the industrial ratio. And this is changing now. I have some agriculture. Look, I've got some trees plopping in. This will grow and look amazing, amazing, amazing. So we got our goods. Now that we have our goods, things are automatically going to start building. Now we just got to worry about how can we be financially stable to keep going. A lot of that's going to be playing around in the stock market, so I want to jump right into that at the beginning of next episode. Basically it's buy low, for example this one, I'll go into details like I said next episode, but I'm going to max out how many shares I can buy while I have a bunch of money and buy it. Boom. I'm negative, but I'm telling you, buy around, oh look, 3.8, buy, I'm gonna max that out. Buy low, sell high, just like the real world. But the nice thing is, is you have time control, right? So we can burn forward in time, burn forward a few months, and then look at that, we're already starting to make a profit. These are gonna flip really quick. So you can go through here, keep an eye on these stocks, buy low, sell high, and you'll never have money problems. So we're gonna be playing the stock market, we're gonna be building up our cities, but most importantly, we're going to be having fun trying to build out some cool train loops and things like that. So this is a train nine. I'm always going to be looking for tips and comments and things like that. I'm still learning the game every episode. So this was just a quick starter on how to get started initially. And I'll see you next episode once we get some people moving in and we'll get some factories built and all kinds of good things. So peace out. Thanks for gaming. Thanks for watching. All that good stuff. See you next time.